Hello group one aspirants, uh, today we are going to deal with this uh, DRDO which is a very prominent organization in the defense and technology related operations. Today let us uh, discuss this DRDO. So what is DRDO? DRDO is the defense research and development organization to set up in 1958 to augment the defense capabilities of post independent India. So it is found by amalgamation of a technical development establishments of Indian Army and the Directorate of Technical Development and Production DTDP with the Defense Science Organization that is DSO. So this initially it was set up with the uh, 10 laboratories but has grown ever since with uh, presently more than 52 laboratories with factories also. So, it also employs around 5000 scientists and 25000 other scientific and technical person. It is a premier defense organization and works under the ministry of defense, works under the ministry of defense. The motto of this DRDO is Balasya Molam Vigyam meaning that strength comes from the science, the true to this motto it has served in nation building. The prime objective of this DRDO is to make India prosperous by a world class science and technology base and provide our defense services a decisive edge by equipping them with internationally comparative systems and solutions. So, what is the vision of this organization? So, this the, to provide a strong science and technology base for the country and make our defense system equip, equipped with internationally competitive state of the art uh, competitive system and solutions. So, the main objectives of this organization is to design, develop and lead to production the state of the art sensors, weapon systems, platforms and allied equipment for defense services. Also, to provide the technological solutions to services to optimize the combat effectiveness and promote well being of the troops. To develop infrastructure and committed quality manpower and build strong indigenous technology base. So, in this, uh, what I would like to say here is this DRDO's main objective is to develop weapons develop the kind of system that help the each army or uh, our uh, army or our defense uh, air and naval uh, uh, troops so that they will also work effectively efficiently and we also develop this infrastructure so that it will help them perform their duties effectively so the value products of technology systems Developed with DRDO and inducted into the services or in the process of induction stands at over 1,90,000 crores. So, these include so the products like uh, combat vehicles, missiles, multi barrel rocket launchers, unmanned aerial vehicles, radars, electronic warfare systems, sonars, torpedoes, all these things are produced or in the process inducted in the army in the services or in the process of induction in this at various stages. So, the bridging systems, combat aircraft, sensors, NBC technologies, parachutes, combat free fall systems, propellants, explosives, detonators, communication system, armament systems, cyber systems etcetera. So, these are all helpful in the long run for the country also to achieve the self reliance in defense sector. So, what are this? Let us look into this DRDO applications or sensors, sensor systems, weapons and allied equipment okay? and then combat technology and well being of troops, the infrastructure and quality manpower with strong indigenous base that we are talking. So, achievements, what are those achievements or specific instruments for national building? Let us look into this one by one. The integrated guided missile development program under the leadership of this Dr. A.B.J. Abdul Kalam, 
which saw the rollout of this crucial missiles and weapon systems built a strong fleet of diversified missile systems diversified missile systems let us look into the one by one that is prithvi prithvi is nothing but it's a short range surface to surface missile prithvi is a surface to surface tactical that is a short range missile prithvi that means land so surface to surface as so you try to remember that word and there is an another one agni agni is a, a long range that is intercontinent surface to surface missile that is an another agni one agni two agni three it's like that we have a different various ranges so what do you mean by this range first let me give you a simple understanding of this range range in the sense suppose we have a missile here we have a missile here and if you fire this missile it would take this it will go to it will this missile will go to some place and then he hits this place right and the range is nothing but the distance between this the distance between the origin and the target is called a range this is called a range so if a long range that is intercontinental uh, sub means it is more than 5000 uh, kilometers intercontinental if it is a more than 5000 kilometers then we call this as a long range intercontinental missiles we all know intercontinental means one continent to another continent if a missile can go to one continent to another continent then we can call this as a intercontinental missile so intercontinental missile is a agni is the long range surface to surface you remember this word surface to surface missile and then we have an another uh, one is a, a trishul trishul is a surf short range surface to air surface to air missile trishul we all know that trishul is a weapon of a lord shiva lord shiva will actually it's a handheld uh, weapon so if handheld weapon means surface to air if if you throw that it will go into the air from air, hand to air that's why surface to air missile short range missile and then we have another akash it is a medium range surface to air missile surface to air missile is an akash akash is a surface to mid medium range surface to air missile and there is an another one is a nag nag is a anti tank missile nag is a anti tank missile so these are all built many other missiles like nirbhay astra sagarika etc this developed the world's fastest cruise missile brahmos jointly with russia in june 2020 air launched this ballistic missile brahmos given a combat clearance so brahmos is a a cruise missile what is cruise missiles cruise missile means what so we know that uh, we I, i i i tell you about this message when you you know if it goes a single a particular trajectory that trajectory cannot be changed once you fire here it will reach here in a particular direction itself and this trajectory whatever it is there if this trajectory is not going to be changed then that is called ballistic so ballistic missile is the missile which has a constant trajectory that means this is a fixed trajectory but cruise missile is not like that cruise missile is does not can have this constant a simple a single trajectory so it might go this and then it reach like this it will come again it may hit this it will come here it will go like this it will go like this also it it reaches here it changes here and then it reaches again it will go here it will come here and it will hit the target that means 
cruise missile is the missile that you can control the trajectory of the missile. So, in the cruise missile, we will be controlling the trajectory of the missile. This will help us to avoid the anti-missile uh, uh, missiles, anti-missile uh, weapons that comes in the forward. So, these missiles will also help us so that it will uh, you know take this. So, this cruise missile sometimes even the target might also change. So, if the target also changes, then also a cruise missile will uh, you know uh, change the target also. So, if the target is somewhere here then, then cruise missile will change its directory and then reach the target. That is the reason why it is called cruising. So, this is happens either with the help of a computer. That computer might be fit in this, uh, fit in the missile itself or that may be controlled by the by us like the way we control drones it may be anything so these are the uh, cruise missile uh, thing that uh, you need to understand and now let us look into the ballistic missile defense almost uh, completed a two tier interceptor that is a multi layered shield uh, can map over 60 kilometers almost uh, from 600 to you know prithvi air defense uh, uh, Prithvi air defense is the one which will call uh, you know almost 60 kilometers, 600 kilometers and then 50 to 80 kilometers is a short range one which is covered by ballistic missile defense. So, advanced air defense is an another one which will be uh, covering from 15 to 30 kilometers is a sword fish radar, sword fish radar it would cover up to 800 kilometers. So, what is this radar is all about? what is this a radar? See this radar is nothing but actually they sent a signals continuously in a particular region. So, if they send the particular signals continuously, so you have sent radar is something like this let, let me give you an example and this radar will continuously send the signals and the signals are hit by anything that comes in this, this. and then these uh, will actually reflected uh, waves or reflected waves comes back and captures this radar based on the captured uh, waves captured uh, signals it will actually we will find it out whether what kind of uh, uh, you know object is that. So, this is a radar system that we so we that is the reason why we always find out we can find out if an enemy aircraft enters into the Indian borders, we can find it out with the help of radars. So, these radars will send the signals and then reflector signals will come to us back and those signals are captured, analyzed and based on the analysis we will figure it out whether this is a, a particular aircraft or particular missile is coming towards us or not. So, those kind of things are uh, kept in this. So, in this uh, uh, multi uh, two tire insects interceptor is that only. So, 2 tire is a 1 tire is a 50 to 80 kilometers and a 15 to 30 kilometers air, air defense. Air defense means anywhere between 15 to 30 kilometers if anything comes, if our enemy's missile comes between this 15 to 30 kilometers, then automatically our advanced air defense system activates that the sword fish radar activates and then our ballistic missiles can be our ballistic missile can be uh, launched there itself. So, that is how this uh, two tire system works. If anything comes between 50 to 80 kilometers if an adversary's uh, missile or aircraft comes in our ballistic missiles can be launched there itself there also. So, this is another important thing is indigenization of the technology. LCA Teja, this is a multi role fighter jet uh, one, this is upgradation of the LCA to UCAV also done uh, with us itself. So, DRDO indigenous, indigenously developed this LCA that light combat aircraft that is a Tejas, LCA Tejas, that is a multi role fighter jets, upgradation of this LCA to UCAV that is unmanned uh, combat aerial vehicle and then unmanned UAVs that is Nishai, a tactical uh, one that is also uh, uh, UAVs, unmanned uh, aerial vehicles. 
and Laksha, this is a pilotless target uh, one, and Varunastra and Ushar for Navy and so on, these are also developed with the help of this. In September 2019, the DRDO of policies and procedures for transfer of technology was unveiled where this DRDO agreed to transfer this technology contracts with 16 companies and allied technologies to electronic systems, warning systems, armaments, etc. So, what is this warning systems and uh, armaments and then electronic system? Electronic systems, many things, many uh, equipments we use this in, in the missiles. In the missiles, in the cruise missile, uh, how can a uh, cruise missile uh, works actually? Cruise missile works based on the electronic systems that are present in that system, uh, in that missile itself. So, this electronic system takes the, captures the uh, target and then the targeted captured uh, one is uh, taken back and the process analyzes that and then based on the analysis it will actually cruise. So, this kind of electronic system even warning systems also if an enemy missile or if an enemy aircraft comes into enemy object any object comes into the helicopter or comes into Indian territories we need to have the warning systems. So, those warning systems are also developed by this even armaments like uh, you know the uh, jackets and all these things are also helmets, jackets they are all uh, designed and developed with the uh, uh, by DRDO itself and the technology related to these are transferred to 16 companies here. And DRDO also involved with Gaganyaan and space grid force that we have learned uh, in this previous uh, uh, space technology chapter. And then a DRDO labs are working with ICMR for a special hand sanitizers and diagnostic kit by the WHO standards. Also protective waterproof clothing with high strength polymer for chemical, biological, nuclear uh, for medical staff. So, this DRDO is also working with ICMR as a medical Indian council of medical research. So, hand sanitizers even during the COVID-19 also this uh, DRDO came up with the various medicines that would uh, that would improve the immunization and this protective waterproof clothing is a, or with a high strength polymer for chemical, biological, nuclear or medical stuff. Medical stuff basically uses this uh, biological uh, materials which might uh, be harmful for the for our body also for such type of to handle such type of uh, material uh, we need to have a special cloths that special cloths are designed and developed by DRDO with and ICMR together and there is an another important thing is missile Shakti. Missile Shakti that is ASAT that is anti-satellite weapons. DRDO with ISRO in partnership with ISRO successfully destroyed a satellite at an altitude of 300 kilometers in LEO orbit. LEO means low earth orbit. So, this is a missile Shakti that is a anti-satellite weapons. The, mostly this China and uh, Russia is developing this, uh, uh, putting these weapons in the satellites in the space programs. Though it is banned, but there some countries are putting those things. So, developing this technologies, if in the future, if our adversary keeps the weapons in a satellite and then they fire from there and they target the Indian uh, uh, spaces and then we have to have such type of technology that would destroy those satellites. So, for that we have developed this AS-80 that is anti-satellite weapons. So, we have successfully destroyed a satellite that is at an altitude of 300 kilometers from the earth. And we also develop the sensors. What are those sensors? Sensors are nothing but this early born, airborne early warning and control systems. This is AVOX, it is also called as AVOX. You can see this in the vehicle, in this uh, picture here is a AVOX. What this airborne early warning and control system is nothing but something like this. This is a AVOC itself. And this AVOC, what this 
AVOC does is that actually flies around in and around the country wherever uh, you know we want to and this actually sends the signals and sends the signals and receives the signals and based on the signal uh, received from the target uh, any object that comes within that vicinity of this area this actually gives the signals so that so that it will actually help us to take early action if any missile comes in that then this airborne this plane itself will actually detect that and it warns us on the ground so that the ground people will activate the missile and there is an integrated sonar system for ekm submarine so what is this sonar is all about sonar is nothing but underwater what uh, we do is in the underwater we cannot simply see the uh, objects that comes in that so for that what we do is we actually send the sound signals and uh, receive the signal we will receive that reflected sound back and uh, based on the received signal sounds sound signals we will actually find out whether an object adversaries our enemies objects are anything coming from other side or not so if a submarine comes coming in our direction how can we detect our submarine releases this sonars and that sonars the received signal receive signals based on the signals analysis we will figure it out whether a particular anything any objects like submarines are coming towards indian territories or not so if any objects any enemy objects comes stays in the vicinity of the indian uh, indian waters then we will this will also be detected here and there is an hull mounted sonar that is also sound navigation arranging so nor that is so n a is taken from navigation and the r is taken from ranging sound navigation arranging this is a hulk mounted one and so like in the submarines also and there is a, another one is a rajendra is a surveillance radar so talking about the surveillance radar means it will actually keeps observe observe the indian vicinity so rajendra is a surveillance radar and there is a weapon locating radar swati so swati is an another radar named as a swati it would actually locates the weapon was so 3d low level light weight radar alesha aslesha so 3d low level light weight radar aslesha mk1 is also an another surveillance sensor and 3d surveillance radar revati is also another one that uh, uh, sensor that is developed by drto is a 3d surveillance radar revati so revati will actually takes the 3d pictures 3d things okay and then the electronic warfare systems for navy we have sangraha sangraha is an electronic warfare system for navy and electronic warfare system for army that is samyukta and electronic warfare system for uh, system divya drishti is also another sensors and the electronic support measures like varuna is also another sensor that's developed by drdo so what are the weapon system that we have the akash weapon system we have we have prithvi missile uh, for army and air force we have supersonic uh, cruise missiles that is brahmos brahmos is the a joint venture of india and russia so brahma brahmos is the named after the name itself came from the two rivers that is brahma river brahma and river moscow's two rivers and two countries that is moscow india and uh, russia and there is an another multi barrel uh, rocket launcher uh, system that is pinaka mk1 so pinaka is nothing but is a multi barrel uh, rocket system for every rocket launches we need every rocket we need to have a launchers so for launchers we will be having a multi barrels so this is called barrel if we have a multi barrels then it is called a multi barrels there is multi power the rocket is launched in this 
and there is a, a torpedo advanced light and a heavy weight ship launch torpedo varunastra is also another uh, important uh, torpedo that's a torpedo is nothing but it's another missiles and apart from the missiles and uh, sensors we also developed this soldier support systems the computerized the pilot a uh, selection system for indian air force is also developed by drdo so computerized pilot selection system for indian air force and we also developed this uh, telemedicine system for navy we also developed the submarine escape suit that you can see here so developed by submarine there's a drdo developed by drdo the submarine escape submarine actually submarine is nothing but it is a vehicle that actually stays under water for long time if anything happens if the submarine fails in the water what happens to the people in that so they they have to escape from that so they go under the water like 1 km depth 2 km depth uh, depth of uh, depth water under the sea so they have to escape for that what we they need to have they need to have a special escape suits those suits are developed by this uh, drdo also and then there are, we have a flame retardant gloves of course this gloves we have uh, these people will actually uh, you know work with the fire also this is fire so fire flame retardant gloves also developed by this nbfc products the nbc products also developed by this and then defense institute of high altitude research is another one dihar is under drdo so defense institute of high altitude research we all know that kargil war has actually taught us many things in this kargil war the soldiers the pakistani soldiers were were staying in the high altitude and we have to go from the bottom so the siachen and this area is a high altitude region which is a very sensitive and very important region for the country so for that we need to have a high altitude research so that the how we can survive there how you know to how long we can stay there the our country our country's strength lies on the best technology that we have and the best people who can fight in this high altitude region will decide whether we will be you know uh, protecting our region in that area or not for that this defense institute of high altitude research is also under uh, the drdo and then also we have a vegetable uh, science like solar based greenhouses including low cost double walled uh, trenches were designed and and it's and it's a sustainability for round the year vegetable cultivation was standardized demonstrated and disseminated so this technology is also disseminated by this drdo to the private people also so horticulture and post harvest technologies is also installed and demonstrated a gradient based drip irrigation system to conserve water in cold desert the medicinal and aromatic plants and formulated herbal anti accident supplement using this medicinal plants growing at high altitude to counteract the high altitude maladies so high altitude psychology this is established world highest high altitude physiology or uh, this high sorry high altitude physiology the established this world highest high altitude physiology workstation at changla that is around uh, 17586 feet the drdo young scientist laboratories are expected to carve new frontiers in the advanced technologies and smart materials to enable the development of the future plastic uh, defense systems so drdo young scientist laboratories or laboratories uh, the other four laboratories located this one laboratory is located in bangalore and uh, set to con- concentrate on artificial intelligence and the other four labs are located in various places like uh, kolkata focusing on this asymmetric technologies in iit chennai we have cognitive technologies in iit mumbai we have content technologies in iit hyderabad uh, we have smart in in hyderabad we have smart materials so what is this critical let us look into the critical 
of this uh, uh, DRDO. The DRDO has been called as a white elephant by CAG and Parliamentary Standing Committee, which is which means that the DRDO is actually wasting a lot of money. It has been infamous for the time and cost overruns, which could be seen in the delivery of Arjun main battle tank and spy systems, radars, and even LCA Tejas. LCA Tejas was very, uh, you know, it's delayed like anything. So DRDO was established in 1958 and is initially with the, we have talked about the 10 laboratories, but as I was going 52 and then we have funding constraints. Let us look into the several issues like uh, funding constraints. The low revenue commitment accrued to the DRDO. This PSC, Pub Parliamentary Standing Committee on Defence in 2017 noted that the cost escalation and long delays are due to funding delays. For example, the Kaveri engine has seen a six year delay which resulted in 800 percent cost escalation. So, Kaveri is an engine okay, that is developed by DRDO and uh, because of these delays the cost has increased 800 percent times. So, and another uh, important thing is import dependency. India accounts for almost 12 percent of the total defense imports of the world. So, of course, according to the uh, Stockholm's Peace Research Institute. This is due to the fact that all the technology developed by DRDO is not suitable. The services reject many products due to poor standards and quality. The so, Army, Naval and then uh, Air Defense will actually reject many products due to the poor standards and quality. And there is an another important thing is obsolete technology. Many R&D projects are still tinkering with a World War II equipment. So, General uh, V.K. Singh is a, retired, uh, is a retired one noted that 97 percent of the Army's Air Defense is obsolete. That is what he said. And the lab to lab factory dichotomy. According to this IDSA, the main problem with DRDO is uh, shifting work from factories to labs. The work should actually happen in the factories, not in the labs. No procedure works takes place in the factories, and labs do research without a game plan. So, because of this the dichotomy, many labs also function without defense R&D. So, for example, four DRD were labs in food and agriculture and one in business management, which overlaps with ICAR and others. ICAR is already there for agriculture related things. And again, DRD is also uh, have their own food and agriculture related uh, labs. So, where is this coordination comes into this? this ICAR is the one which has this uh, practical knowledge, this field knowledge, factory. But our DRDO does not contain that. So, because of this dichotomy issue, this we are uh, having this ineffective uh, things. And there is an another problem is inadequate manpower. Lack of synergy with the armed forces, uh, skills and tactics, there is also poor accountability in this. So, because of these issues, well, so what is the way forward for this? So, the in-house proposal that is uh, back to factories from labs, we have to go to the factories. The factories will become a China. If you look at the China, China will actually takes imports any uh, equipment and then reverse engineers that. That happens in the factories, not in the labs, and shut down these unproductive labs or integrate them. So, Ministry of Defense plans to merge or close the 20 labs. P K Ramarao Committee in, uh, recommended forming a commercial arm for the project. And there is a VK Sarasri, the ex DRDO chief, recommended for Defense Tech Commission and DRDO to pick production itself. So, for the development and even the outsourcing activities like a long term combat with TCS for software solution, they have come out with the DRDO uh, TCS col collaboration. And DRDO in 2021 launched with HR perspective for free and fair knowledge sharing and open book and participative management. So, these are the important uh, way forward uh, for this program, uh, DRDO and uh, thank you very much.